All right, I want to address a lot of the timeline in this video, so I'm back to my cool electric piano. And I talked about how MIDI is connected and how you can monitor MIDI and what a virtual instrument host is in my previous video. So now I want to get into what's called the timeline. So way up here, this is the timeline. And one thing about the timeline uh, is it, it is kind of small, but all DAWs will have one, kind of like a ruler. I'm going to zoom out just a bit here to show a few things. Okay. The 4-4, four, four, hopefully you can see now, that is your time signature. So if I right click on that, I can edit that if I would like to, and, and this box will pop up. And I could change it to 3-4. Now watch what happens to the, uh, everything shifts, okay? The beats did. I'm gonna make it even bigger so you can kind of see. This is measure one, measure two, measure three, measure four. They call them bars, and it's good to be in bars for what we're doing right now, okay? And this is the time ruler format. There are other time bases, seconds, samples, frames, and so on. So bars is what we're working on right now. Now, I want to change that back. Uh, in fact, I want to put it back to 4-4, four, four. but instead of doing it here, if I want, I can go down here to timing, and I could change it here on the transport. So the transport is something that is important to know. It depends on what DAW you are in. Uh, Studio One has their transport here at the bottom. Uh, Pro Tools has one at the top that's detachable. Uh, you, you, many DAWs will have ones that you can use, uh, and then different versions of ones you can use. Yours may not even be uh, all of these functions because uh, I have a very wide screen. Okay, next up is this. So we did time signature. If I want to put another one in, I just click on this timeline with my right mouse or right click <laughs> on the timeline and insert time signature. And there I could put in, let's say, a time signature change if I'd like. And again, a, a, um, a, a time track like this or a timeline, this is very common in all DAWs. Okay, this is my 3-4 there. Now let's get into the next important thing, which is tempo. Tempo, so that is this little icon right here. Uh, again, if you mouse over things long enough, uh, it will show up. One thing I recommend for beginners is this little uh, info view. What info view does is this. Anytime you're getting ready to do something, it actually gives you directions, like from the help file. And yes, there's a help file, okay, reference manual. So the info view um, that I'm on right now uh, tells me different things I could do, and as soon as I move it, it changes, okay? So here it is, to use the time scale tool, place your audio file, blah, 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 okay? So tempo track I'm going to open. Uh, here it is, and again, it's like a music track. The only difference is, this 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 is how fast or slow we're going you could change the start i like to um type in say i'm going to do 120 see how it moved you can also um dr uh, drag and move there we go that's what i was looking for um or you can get really wild and grab your pencil and say you're doing a crush or a accelerando or a slowdown how cool is that right so you could just draw tempos in like so uh, let me actually use this. I'm going to highlight them and hit delete because uh, I'll go back to just a regular old tempo and know that this is connected to the transport down here where it says tempo as well. So I can actually change it right here. Now say I go along and when I hit this 3-4, I want to speed up. Well, I hit the plus sign to add another tempo change. And now that I'm at that plus sign, say I want to go to 140 or something. There we go. And so there I am from 130 to 140. And if I want to gradually increase for like an entire measure, that's where I could use my lovely pencil here. And I want to go from here, which is uh, I drew a little dot in there. Let me go back. Oh, yeah, there we go. And what I'm wanting to do, I went back to this. This is your multi-tool up here is to draw kind of a smooth line here, and there we go. And what that's going to do is gradually get faster over time. Okay? All right, so that is a bit of the timeline and some of the T's here. There are other things up here that I want to get into. The marker track, another track. The marker track is this. See where it says start, 
and if I zoom way in, there's an end marker. You always want to put that at the end. And the reason why is when you go to song to export your mix down of what you've been doing, you can export everything that's just in between those two markers right there. And that's a great thing to be able to do. Okay. Uh, so the marker track is also good for putting in, say here is where measure, I don't know, 20. I'm going to hit OK. And that's going to be where my verse is. So I type in, and I got this on another screen here, verse 1. Uh, and there we go. So you can actually put in markers. Now, if you're working on a movie or something, maybe you're going to be typing in cues like person coughs or something. But the point is... Uh, that you have markers that you could put in here uh, on the marker track. So tempo track and marker track, these are very common in all DAWs, and they're typically up at the top left of your arrange slash compose view. All right, I hope that helps with some of those other tracks that are up here. Check out more of my videos, hit like and subscribe, and uh, tell all your friends.